All right, g'day everyone. Welcome back to the channel after what was a far more predictable round five. I think everyone did particularly well in the tipping. As you would have guessed from the title, I'm gonna be taking you through round six's predictions as well as a look at the end at what the final ladder would be if I get all my tips correct. Before we get into that, I do have to admit I have made a TikTok. Now, being a 26 year old man, I held off on getting TikTok for as long as possible. But on the advice of some good friends who know better than myself, they suggested I get around it. So I don't even know if you can send a link to TikTok. My name's True Footy on there. So if you use the app, go check it out, get around it, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. And in further news, you would have seen, I did a podcast on the weekend that came out with uh, Collingwood YouTuber Swoop Luke. So I recommend go checking that out. And also if you're a fan of Druzy, got another podcast coming out with him. Uh, this coming Sunday, we filmed it last weekend, but that will be hitting your screens Sunday around 1 p.m. lunchtime. Both of those are really good blokes, so I recommend getting around their channels as well. And going forward, I would like to do a little bit more of those kind of podcasts going forward. Uh, I've kind of did a pause after the, like the last you know six, eight weeks of doing that podcast. Um, so hopefully that will be something that we bring back. But let's start talking 2020 football. Obviously, as I said before, it was a more predictable round. I'll have a look at who is winning the tipping. I think it's still Cardman22. He is on 32 tips. My dad was at pains to remind me to give him a shout out. He is currently fourth in the tipping. Uh, fourth ain't first dad, although he's doing better than me. I'm down at 65th out of 223 people. So that sucks. The winner of the last round was a guy or woman called Barusha who tipped the margin correctly and got eight tips correct. I got eight tips as well, I think, and it was probably what everyone else got wrong, probably the Collingwood Essendon game tipped the Pies to win that. Uh, and that was the only one I got wrong and I thankfully changed my tip to the Eagles last minute and they repaid the faith there. And also guys, because I have been a little bit slack on the old round review videos where I normally announce the fantasy winner, or the leader rather, I'm gonna do it now. Taz Wood is once again leading the competition with an average of 16.63. His team's called The Thug Fife, I like that. And he is, uh, yeah, in front by an average of 30 points a week. So we've got a bit of catching up to do, especially myself, as I sit languishing in 77th. But that is enough of that, guys. We are looking at the Squigger website. Uh, they should do a sponsorship deal with me after this series, as someone suggested in the comments a couple weeks ago. But let's have a quick look at the letter. Port Adelaide, Brisbane, Geelong, and the Saints are our top four currently. That reminds, That's a very 2004-looking top four. Uh, Essendon and the Gold Coast sit 5th and 6th, and GWS and the Dogs round out the 8th. Hawthorne and Collingwood and Richmond, some heavy hitters, particularly the latter two, sit 10th and 11th. Carlton, North, Sydney, more familiar names down there. And West Coast, my boys, despite the win, still sit in the bottom four, along with Fremantle, Melbourne and Adelaide. And it looks like Melbourne have plummeted. I say plummeted, they've moved down one or two spots. 217th, though, of course, they've played one less game. All right, guys, I'm going to get straight into it. Um, and you can see, if you've seen these videos before, the ladder will update as I go along. So we're looking, first of all, at Geelong and Brisbane at the SCG. And this is the first round where you're going to get a lot of these neutral games because, obviously, the Victorian sides have relocated to, um, you know, various parts of the country uh, going forward. So no games in Victoria from this round. So, yeah, uh, there's no home ground advantage here. Who does this suit better on a smaller ground? Lions are in red-hot form, but the caveat to that is all four of their wins have been against decent to average sides at home. So let's not forget that. They've played one game away from home. They got battered by the Hawks. They've beaten West Coast, uh, Fremantle, and Adelaide. And they've beaten Port, although Port is obviously playing some pretty good football then. So that is that was probably the first most convincing uh, performance I've seen from them. They're definitely still a very good good, very good team. The top two from last year, actually, these two. And Geelong have sort of been a little bit all over the place. Last week, coming up against an up-and-coming Gold Coast side, although I just don't think I rate Gold Coast quite as highly as other teams. But Geelong, you know, got the job done. Oh, on a neutral ground, I think I just feel like the Cats are a stronger side on their day. But Brisbane are probably playing better football at the moment, going in with a little bit more confidence. Oh, this is a tough one. I actually just have not pre-planned who I was going to tip at all for this game. I was tempted to say Geelong before, but I think I'm actually going to go with the Lions, and I'm going to tip them to win a thriller by seven points. There you go. All right, Collingwood and Hawthorne at Giant Stadium. 
Collingwood, uh, well, both of these two teams played there in the last two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Collingwood went down by two points and Hawthorne lost by about five or six goals last week. Collingwood, another side that's been up and down. From my mind, they're still the benchmark. I still think this is the team I'm most wary of in terms of winning the premiership. And then Hawthorne, a little bit Jekyll and Hyde as well. As you can see, three and two with a percentage of 91 really sums up the point I'm trying to make. Oh, last week, the Pies were undone by a, a good Essendon side. It has to be said, Essendon are sitting 3-1 and one and 111% at the moment. So there's no real shame in losing that, and they're kind of having things crumble around them at the moment with the Dugowie De- De- investigation, steel side bottom suspension, and Jeremy Howe's injury. Ah, uh, man, this is a tough one. On the recent form at this ground, Collingwood have done better. I think they're a better team, but it's just a case of their mindset I think I'm going to go with the Pies to win this, to bounce back and win this by 16 points. Fremantle and St. Kilda at Metricon. This was originally Fremantle and Melbourne. Um, that would have been a pretty evenly contested game. I really don't think Fremantle are that bad. Um, last week, they got the job done over Adelaide, although they probably made it a little bit harder than I thought they should have. They went, they won by 20 points, but Adelaide really clawed them back. Adelaide's 0-5 with 53%. So... Um, they're coming up against St. Kilda. This is kind of a home game for Fremantle in the sense that they've at least played consistent football at Metricon. But they are coming against a very informed side, I will say. I, I, St. Kilda are playing some good football. They touched up Richmond. They, they beat Carlton, who are full of confidence at the moment. So I can't knock them down for that. And this is more of an away game for the Saints than it is for Fremantle, as I said. Look, I just think St. Kilda are a better side. I think that's as simple as that, to be honest. St. Kilda are playing some good football. They're full of confidence. They'll go into this game and see it as very winnable. Fremantle will see it as winnable as well, but I'm going to say the Saints get the job done by four goals. Next up at the Gabba is West Coast and Adelaide, two bottom four sides, although we saw last week the Eagles really... They performed in the way I expected them to against Port Adelaide. In dry conditions, I thought... Against Port, I thought that they would come out and um, play the game more on their terms, but instead they got touched up, and we had to wait a week to see that side come into their own, and I think it really was that Jake Waterman goal on the quarter time sign that really lifted the spirits of the side. Might be an overrated moment, I don't know if people agree with that, but I think just the way they went into that quarter time full of beans, um, we saw a different side emerge after that, and hopefully that is a sign of things to come, and they're coming up against a side that is really struggling. Adelaide lost by... Four goals against pretty much the next worst side on form that we've seen so far. Matt Crouch came back into the side and performed pretty well, I think, in the midfield. That being said, these form lines are going in opposite directions. I think the Eagles will be too good. They should win this by about five goals. Maybe I'm overconfident. I know the Eagles haven't been that much better than Adelaide so far, but just based on last week, I think they'll replicate that form. I think they're a five-goal better side at the moment. Next up is Melbourne and Gold Coast again at G- Giant Stadium. Oh, this is actually a tough one. So, I mean, at the start of the year, I would have said Melbourne is a comfortably better list, but the the way these two sides have started the year are polar opposite. So, Melbourne's played one less game, but they're one and three at 78%. Their only win was against the Blues by one point in a performance that you could say wasn't the most convincing you've ever seen. They got out to a massive, well, seven-goal lead and uh, nearly let it crumble. And we just have a little bit less data on them because they didn't play Essendon, but I'd be confident in saying they probably would have lost to Essendon. Mind you, with the way this season's going, fucking who knows. Gold Coast performed fairly well against GM, uh, Geelong at GMHBA. It's a tough trip, that one, even with no crowd. We saw what happened to Hawthorne there at the start of the reboot of the season. Rouse out. I wonder if that's going to take a bit of sting out of their sails. That's not the right expression, but we'll go with it. Mm. It's at a neutral ground. Both of these sides will see this as play, as as winnable. I'm not too sure about this one. Look, Gold Coast are interested in better form and playing with more confidence. And I, I think they kind of got better with Rao when he went without Rao when he went down. So I don't think it's necessarily that they rely on him. Backyard Charizard is going to hate this. So I'm going to tip the Suns to get the job done narrowly here. And if, he, if they do, then that puts a lot of pressure on the Ds. And Simon Goodwin really needs to improve on last year's result. And if they lose this... At one and four, it's not looking good for him. Anyway, I won't make any big too, too big a calls. I'll say the Giants win this by 11 points. Essendon versus North Melbourne uh, at Metricon again. Oh, these two sides are so hard to peg. North Melbourne have been up and down so much this year. You know, they beat the Giants in Sydney not long ago, and then they were disappointing against the Hawks uh, and then came back at the end to win. Uh, sorry, to almost win. 
Um, and then last week, they got touched up by a Bulldog side who has been equally unpredictable this year. They're capable on their day, but it's just they're so hard to tip because they just are very selective with when they pull out these performances. And Essendon, when you think about it, on what we've seen so far, haven't done too much wrong. So they knocked off the Pies last week, which is a big scalp. You know, at the start of the year, they beat Essendon, uh, sorry, they beat Fremantle and Sydney by a goal each, which are solid wins, nothing more. And their one losses against the Carlton side, who was playing some good football at times. Although, you know, every team's dropping points. So as, as far as it goes, that's the only blemish on their record. I think they won their last... I think Essendon beat them last year as well. I'm going to say the Dons, but this is the sort of game that will ruin my tipping. I'm going to tip the Dons by four goals. Port Adelaide versus the Giants at... Oh, this is a tough one as well. See, okay, Port Adelaide, we're a side that, you know... I, and I get I get people in the comments writing to me saying, you hate Port Adelaide, but let's look at this objectively. The teams they'd beaten up to this point have not really been that convincing. Gold Coast in round one, and then they beat Adelaide, and they torch West Coast, and they beat Fremantle. So they're not really doing anything wrong. But then the first real contest that they come against... The, sorry, the first real challenge, I would say, is Brisbane at the Gabba, and they got done by six goals. Now, that doesn't make them a bad team. doesn't make them, you know, pretenders or frauds or anything like that, but I just don't see them on the same level as some of the other contenders this year. This is kind of a home game for them, uh, considering they've played a little bit of footy here, and the Giants haven't played there this year, if I'm not mistaken. And the Giants, again, have been unpredictable as well. They've beaten Geelong and Collingwood. They've lost to North. Uh, they've beaten Hawthorne. So they're on the up in terms of their form line. But it's a week-to-week proposition with most teams at the moment. Port Adelaide are flying their second. But I think the Giants are a better side. And there's no shame on Port Adelaide. And I'm, I'm just going to cop it. I'm going to cop it in the comments. But uh, the Giants are going to win this. They're just a better side. They're going to win by 14 points. Richmond versus Sydney at the Gabba. This will be... An interesting contest with the Richmond playing pretty average football at 2-2-1 two, two, and one with 98%. Last week going down uh, again. Actually, no, last week they, they played well against Melbourne. It was the week before they got done by the Saints. So, you know, pretty eclectic form again from them. And, you know, they're, they're the true sleeping giant this year. I think they said the Eagles were the sleeping giant. I don't see it like that. I mean, Richmond are the sleeping giant, reigning premiers. And if you look at the way they started 2017 and 2019, uh, both of those years were bad starts for Richmond. Now, this year, they don't have the injury excuse, although adversity is starting to pile up. It looks like they're going to Queensland without Basha Hooley. And was the other player Shane Edwards? Off the top of my head, I think it was. So, a couple of outs for him. Coming up against the bottom four side, who really let the Eagles play into their own game last week. Maybe Sydney aren't truly a bottom four side. I really don't know where it sits, but they're not far off. Maybe bottom six. I think I'm going to have to back the Tigers in a neutral ground, considering they touched up Melbourne last week. They'll go in with a little bit of confidence. Even without some key players, they are a better side, and this will just sort of keep them around the hunt for a little bit longer. Carlton and the Bulldogs. Ah, this is a tough one. Two sides playing good football. Carlton kind of had their enthusiasm dampened last week by, by the Saints to... Yeah, two informed sides again last week coming up against each other. It was a real tough one to tip that one. The Saints obviously got the job done, but there's no shame on Carlton, who just beat Essendon and Geelong in consecutive weeks. Did Carlton beat the Bulldogs twice last year? They certainly beat them. No, they beat them once and then nearly beat them a second time, I think, where Kuno kicked like seven goals, if I'm not mistaken. For my mind, I don't know. I wonder if the Bulldogs' form is a little more convincing than Carlton's at the moment. Even though Carlton match up well on the dogs. It wasn't that long ago. I think the Bulldogs got done by the Saints by several goals. And we were talking about the missing finals. But they've come back hard. And uh, they knocked off North fairly easily last week. And they beat the Giants. And they beat Sydney away from home as well. It's hard to tip against that form line against the Carlton side that is just so up and down. We know they can beat most teams on their day. But the form we're seeing right at the moment makes them very hard to back in. I'm going to go the dogs to win this by 22 points. And that is it. That is the end of the round. The next game that's coming up is Geelong and Collingwood at Perth. Um, so that is it for that round, folks. Let's have a quick look at the ladder. Brisbane sit in top spot over Port. Essendon in third spot despite playing one less game. That's a very good effort. St. Kilda retain their spot in the top four. Gold Coast up to fifth. 
beating uh, beating the D's, and at this point, you're thinking, maybe finals, maybe finals. Probably not, though. GWS and the Bulldogs and Collingwood round out the top eight. Richmond back in their preferred position of ninth, whereas Geelong and West Coast start to creep up. Actually, no, Geelong's not creeping up. West Coast is creeping up to 11th there with Fremantle next week. There's a chance to go into a positive ledger. Hawthorne in 12th, which is, you know, harsh for where... I think they've actually played some good football, and I definitely think they'll play finals. But 12th is where I see them at the end of this round. Carlton, North, Sydney make up the next three. And Fremantle, Melbourne, and Adelaide, for me, are starting to firm as our bottom three teams this year. Again, Melbourne is the one I'm probably least confident will say I'm in saying that they will stay down there. Based on what I've seen so far, that is the way I see it going. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in to another weekly tips video. I'm thinking of doing like a round five or yeah, a round five power rankings video where I rank the teams based on where I think they sit in the premiership race uh, based on, you know, who they've played so far and based on, you know, how I rate their lists. So I'll get working on that in the next couple of days and hopefully it will hit your screens by the time the weekend hits and it's all outdated from round six anyway. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on TikTok, I guess. And I'll see you somewhere on YouTube very soon. Cheers.